Kling just solidified its position again as one of the best video generators with its latest release, the 2.0 model. According to Kling, the new model offers better prompt adherence, improved aesthetics, and more dynamic movement compared to previous versions. On the flip side, video quality is capped at 720p, and generations are more expensive, 100 credits for a 5-second video and 200 credits for a 10-second one, which is kind of wild. So is it really worth the cost? In this video, I'm going to find out by testing it against the previous 1.6 model and other AI video generators like Sora VO2 and WAN 2.1. Kling also dropped a new image generation model for Kohler's along with a few other features, which I'll take a quick look at too. The video generator interface has been updated once again. You can now select the new 2.0 model from the drop-down menu alongside the previous versions and it works with both the text-to-video and image-to-video tools. There's also a new multi-elements feature, which is essentially in-painting for video, but unfortunately it's not yet supported by the new model. We'll dive into that tool a bit later. Let's take a look at some of the videos I've generated, starting with those made using the text-to-video tool. I used the same prompts in Sora and VO2 for comparison. I also tested WAN through design, where it's free and unlimited during the beta phase, but it only supports image to video. Also, Sora is currently unlimited for paid users. Here's a classic prompt, a chef cutting a watermelon, a fun way to test how well the model handles physics. In the 1.6 version, the knife slices through the watermelon in an unrealistic way, and the falling pieces don't look natural at all. The 2.0 model definitely shows improvement. The slicing and motion feel more grounded but it's still not perfect. One of the small slices seems to move awkwardly behind the watermelon, which feels out of place. The Sora version was a total fail. Nothing really worked. Veo, on the other hand, nailed it. It's easily the most convincing of the three. Now on to another prompt I've been trying to get right since the first version, a basketball player going for a slam dunk. The 2.0 model delivers a better result than before, but it still has issues. At one point, the player hovers in midair in a strange way before finally completing the dunk. It's progress, but not quite there yet. In Veo's version, the player really looks like he's pushing himself to dunk and the exhaustion shows. Sora's attempt? Not great. There are multiple hoops, and while the player almost makes the dunk, he just doesn't quite get there. For the next clips, I use the image to video tool. First up is another classic, a little boy dribbling a basketball. In both Kling models, there's still a lot of morphing and inconsistency with the ball, though it's worse in 1.6. Honestly, I'm starting to think this prompt just isn't meant to work well. No matter what I try, the results never quite land. The one video is pretty much a disaster. Sora took a different approach entirely. It made the boy run instead. The ball gets oddly large at one point, but he does manage to dribble it briefly, and overall, it's not a bad attempt. Veo, unfortunately, wouldn't generate the video at all. For this next test, I wanted the camera to quickly circle around to the front of a warrior, reveal his face, and then zoom out. Unfortunately, both Kling models struggled with this prompt. In the 1.6 version, instead of the camera moving, the warrior spins around, though it did manage to execute the zoom out effect. The 2.0 model combined the camera movements instead of performing them in sequence despite my prompt clearly asking for the zoom out after the face reveal. On top of that, the face was only partially shown. I also tried the same prompt in Sora and Wan, but neither handled it much better. In the Wan video, there was heavy morphing in the background buildings, and just like in Kling 1.6, the samurai moves instead of the camera. Sora managed to include the zoom out, but that's about it. This next test focuses on emotional transitions, specifically going from a smile to crying. The 1.6 model looked good visually, and it did include a zoom in, but it completely missed the emotion shift. The 2.0 model, on the other hand, nailed it. The transition was smooth and believable. Sora added a delayed zoom, and while the emotion was a bit mixed, the woman ends the video with a smile instead of tears. In Wan's version, the woman looked like she was both laughing and crying at the same time, and she never looked up as prompted. Now for a more cinematic test, a legion of Terminator robots marching in perfect formation as the camera stays still, then pans right and zooms in on one robot's glowing red eyes. In the 1.6 version, both the camera and the robots remain stationary at the start, 
and it did manage the zoom in, but skipped the pan entirely. The 2.0 model comes really close to getting it right. The camera is stationary for just a brief moment, but it successfully pans and zooms into the eyes as intended. Juan's version of the pan and zoom went off script, introducing a completely different robot and scene, though it did start with a stationary camera. Sora also got the still camera at the beginning, but the robots moved very slowly and lacked impact. Overall, I think it's safe to say the 2.0 version delivered the best result in this case. Here we have two warrior women fiercely dueling with swords, sparks flying, and the camera rotating around them. The 1.6 video looks pretty good, but the 2.0 model comes much closer to capturing exactly what I described in the prompt. The choreography and camera motion feel more dynamic and in line with the intended scene. Sora's version is decent. It looks nice, but it completely ignores the camera movement and skips the sparks. Oddly enough, the scene ends with the warriors talking, which wasn't in the prompt at all. Juan's take is okay too. There are definitely a lot of sparks, but overall it doesn't come close to the quality of either clean version. Next is a scene with a clown who's supposed to dance erratically and laugh uncontrollably as the camera shakes violently with motion blur. I actually like both clean versions, but the 2.0 model sticks more closely to the prompt. The clown is dancing, while in 1.6 he runs around. The camera movement is also more accurate in 2.0, though I'll admit the 1.6 camera movement has a cool, chaotic feel to it. Sora's clown is holding a phone and doing a little dance, not quite what I had in mind, but mildly entertaining. I was pleasantly surprised by Juan's version. The occasional distortion adds a creepy, surreal vibe that really works for this prompt. As for VO, it blocked the prompt entirely. The 2.0 video for this next prompt is unsettling to say the least. I asked for a change in camera perspective, but it seems the model interpreted that as a cue to rearrange the woman's facial features, which ended up looking like something out of a horror film. The sequence of camera movements was also off. It was supposed to descend first, then rotate around her, but that didn't happen. The 1.6 model didn't get the camera movement right either, but at least it didn't turn the scene into nightmare fuel. As for the Juan and Sora versions, they skipped the camera work entirely and just animated the woman instead, not what the prompt called for. Now onto the T-Rex chasing a jeep scene. The 2.0 version is definitely more fast-paced and intense, but the T-Rex hops like a kangaroo, which doesn't align with how scientists believe it moved. The 1.6 model shows a more realistic running motion for the T-Rex, though the overall action feels less dramatic. That said, the way the Jeep escapes in the 2.0 video feels more accurate and believable. Juan and Sora didn't perform well on this one either. Both suffered from heavy morphing and distortion. Vio's version, on the other hand, is unintentionally hilarious. The T-Rex starts off gliding like it's on ice, but once it finally starts running, the rest of the video actually looks pretty decent. The final video is one I've tested across multiple cling versions, and it's never quite worked until now. The prompt was a complex one, a werewolf walking through a crowd with multiple camera movements and reactions from both the werewolf and the people around it. In the 1.6 model, the werewolf barely moves and the crowd doesn't react at all. But finally, there's real progress with the 2.0 model. Some people in the crowd ignore the werewolf, while others visibly react. The werewolf's movement is well done, and the video ends with a dramatic close-up. It's almost perfect, though there's some odd morphing on the left side where people start transforming in strange ways. Both Sora and Juan handled this prompt fairly well, too. The werewolf is animated in the scene, but I would have liked to see stronger, more varied reactions from the crowd. Up until now, the best version came from this Minimax video, but Kling 2.0 has officially taken the top spot. Many of my prompts were unexpectedly blocked in the new model, even though they worked fine in previous versions. One example is this simple prompt of two martial artists sparring in a dojo. I'm not sure why that would be flagged, but the 2.0 model refused to generate it. I was really hoping to see how 2.0 would handle this prompt, especially since 1.6 never quite nailed it, even after several attempts. Unfortunately, the same prompt was also blocked in both Sora and Veo. The only tool that generated it was one. 
but the result wasn't that great. Here's another prompt that was blocked in 2.0, a soldier encountering a gorilla. The 1.6 model was able to generate it and did a decent job with the visuals, but it didn't capture the soldier's reaction to seeing the gorilla. Juan's version was bizarre, but it did at least animate a reaction to the gorilla-like creature. As for Sora, it didn't even include the gorilla in the scene. Now let's try out the multi-elements tool, starting with the swap feature. Keep in mind, this tool isn't available for the new model at the moment. To start, you'll need to upload a reference video or select one from the video history. Once the analysis is complete, a dialog box will appear prompting you to select the object you want to swap. In this case, I want to swap the basketball player, so I'll click on him. The selected object will be highlighted in green. Make sure the entire subject is fully covered. You can also add multiple selection points on the timeline. Personally, I've never had to do that since selecting the object from the first frame has always worked for me. But this feature could be helpful if the object doesn't appear right away. I'm assuming the Reduce Selection option lets you undo or shrink your selection if needed. Once you're happy with the selection, click Confirm. Then upload an image of the object you want to replace it with. I'll be swapping the basketball player with this dog basketball player. If necessary, you can crop the image before proceeding. The prompt box will autofill with a template. You just need to replace the placeholders with your specific details. So in this case, I'm swapping in the dog from my uploaded image for the basketball player in the reference video. Generating the result costs 50 credits. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the original and swapped videos. The dog was in-painted beautifully. There are a few minor inconsistencies. The backboard looks slightly different, and the dog doesn't actually dunk the ball like the original player. But overall, it's a really impressive result. Now let's try adding an item to a video. This one already has a storybook feel to it, so I'm going to make it even more magical by adding a small deer. You can upload two images if needed, but in this case, I'm just using one. Sometimes Kling's auto-generated prompt isn't quite right and needs a bit of tweaking, so the prompt is, using the context of the reference video, seamlessly add the deer next to the woman from the image. The final result turned out really nice. I especially love how the woman looks emotional while the deer just stands there looking adorable and completely unbothered. Now let's move on to deleting an item from a video. I'm going to try removing the Jeep. Just like with the swap tool, you'll need to select the object you want to remove and make sure you update the prompt accordingly. The Jeep is successfully gone, but I forgot to delete its shadow. And honestly, I'm not about to spend another 50 credits just to fix that. Still, a pretty cool-looking video overall. Next, let's check out the new Image Generator model. You can now select the 2.0 model from the drop-down menu. There's also a new Restyle feature in the Upload Reference section, which lets you apply a different style to an existing image. In addition, there's a new High Resolution option that doesn't cost extra credits, though it's not available if you're using the Restyle feature. I'm going to select an image from my history and try out the anime figure style. You'll notice that selecting a style automatically adds a prompt to the prompt box. The result looks pretty cool. It definitely has that anime vibe, but it changed more than just the style. For instance, the windows look completely different from the original. There's also a new InPaint tool, and the Expand tool has been updated. You can access both by hovering over or clicking on an image. First, I'll expand this image to a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. You can enter a prompt to guide the expansion but I'm going to leave it blank. The result looks good, but I think a lamp on the table would really complete the scene. So I'll switch to the InPaint tool. First, you have to select an area. You can use the box selection tool. The brush, which you can resize. Or the eraser tool. I'll go with the box selection and simply prompt for a lamp. A small lamp was added to the table. Of course, you can be more specific in your prompts if you want a more tailored result. You can also access the image editor directly from the home page by clicking the image editing tab on the sidebar. The InPaint tool has extra features like quick selection, 
where you can just click on an area to select it. An inverse selection, which selects everything except the selected area. The expand tool now includes options to scale the canvas. You can also manually adjust the canvas size and reposition the image and revert to the original size. One last update I want to share is the new rocket effect under the effects tab. It says it works best when there's a clearly defined subject in the image. I thought this image of a house would be a good test. The prompt box is automatically filled in for the effect. Here's how it turned out. It didn't quite work. The house didn't take off like I expected. Instead, it just added actual rockets. So I revised the prompt to be more specific about what should be launched, and that did the trick. The house lifted off as intended. It's a pretty cool effect, and I really like the sound effects that come with it. Overall, I'm impressed with these new updates. The 2.0 video model shows a lot of promise. It's powerful and can deliver impressive results, but it's also expensive, and you'll probably still have to re-roll prompts a few times to get what you want. I'm also not a fan of how much more restrictive it seems compared to earlier models. For now, I think I'll stick with the 1.6 version, at least until Kling offers higher video resolution and an unlimited plan. So what do you think of these updates? Do you think the 2.0 model is worth the credits? If you found this video helpful or learned something new, don't forget to give it a like, leave a comment to let me know which feature you're most excited about, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss what's coming next. Your support really helps the channel grow, and I appreciate every one of you. Thank you for watching.